G'day everybody, welcome back to another video on the channel. So another month of AFL football is in the books for season 2022, and in today's video, we'll be doing my power rankings for the month of May in this video. Just quickly, for people who do not know how power rankings work, it is quite simple. We rank AFL teams 18th, which is the worst, to first, which is the best, based on current team form. If you're going to enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. That'd be much appreciated. And let's get into my power rankings. Okay, so for the month of March, we had rounds 8 to 11. So we'll be ranking the teams based on those rounds. And in 18th position, we have got North Melbourne. Continuing from last month, I think North Melbourne will be at the bottom of the power rankings for probably the rest of the year. People could possibly say, why not West Coast? I just feel that West Coast um, have a lot of injuries, have a lot of key players out, but North Melbourne pretty much have a full side. You can say uh, everything bad's just happening. They've lost now nine in a row, I'm pretty sure. Just cannot execute, cannot get a lot of points, but they are showing a lot more heart. So, you know, there's a little bit of upside there. But nevertheless, for me, it's a no-brainer. even talks off the field with the CEOs and the presidents about uh, everybody leaving their um, their draft a staff, a recruitment manager leaving as well. It's just uh, all happening over there at Arden Street. But uh, yeah, for me, North are uh, still in 18th. Again, in 17th, it's a no-brainer. We continue with West Coast in the same position and quite similar to the North Melbourne Football Club in pretty much the same situation as them. Just lose game after game. Games at home, they're just getting smacked up by. And uh, yeah, there's just not really much else to say. Loss after loss. You'd think maybe at home they'd be playing a bit better, but they just cannot execute. Having a lot of plays out injured as well does not help. And yeah, they've just been struggling a lot this season with outs and with uh, a lot of uh, top-up plays too. So you've got to give them a bit of credit there, but uh, quite simply, they are 17th. In 16th spot, again from last month, we continue with Essendon. You know, the bottom three is pretty much staying the, probably the exact same for the rest of the season. Who knows? Uh, it was a fantastic win in round 11 over the Hawks, but then, yeah, they lose the next three to the Swans, and that was just such a signifying loss, just the lack of pressure. A lot of passengers in that side, not enough fight, and they only laid 30 tackles that game, and there was a lot of questions raised in the media of, is this the football club that Essen want to be, just a very lackluster side, not going hard enough at the footy? And some people did have the thought of would they be able to bounce back, but no, simply they were not able to against the Tigers and Port Adelaide. So, uh, yeah, again, a no-brainer, really. They are the third worst team in the competition form-wise, I have to say. In 15th spot now, and I have the Adelaide Crows. It feels a little bit harsh putting Adelaide in 15th spot. They have shown a lot of fight. They've shown a lot of competitiveness, a team not to sleep on, but it's quite simple. They have uh, lost five to last five, and they just seem to be struggling now, starting to hit that slump of the expected bottom four after, you know, quite a very nice start to the season. Three massive losses in the row against the Giants, Carlton, and then the Brisbane Lions. And to be fair, they were quite unlucky not to win against St. Kilda. If they're a bit more accurate, let's say, they really could have picked up the four points there. And then again, they were inaccurate against Geelong and you know, lost by over 40 points. So similar to what I said at the start of the season, I just don't feel that Adelaide have that good enough a grade or top tier talent to really drive them over the bottom four. We're starting to really see them slump game after game now. And uh, for me, they are a bottom four quality side of the moment. So I have them at 15th. In 14th place now, and I do have Hawthorne. Again, a bit of a harsh one. They had a terrific win over the Lions in Tasmania the previous week. But then again, it's just their playing list. It's just not very sustainable. I, again, I don't think they have enough talent to really drive them forward. And they've just lost too many games. They keep on losing results. A very competitive side, do not get me wrong. And they do have that upside, but it's uh, just aren't getting results, so that means they do slide down the power rankings quite a bit. But as just said, they do have that upside, Hawthorne. They really have the ability to shock good quality sides. Like Richmond, they are pretty close against the Tigers, beat the Lions, almost beat the Demons, but I think, but when you really do take a step back, it's just their midfield, I feel, isn't good enough. Just a lot of underachieving plays in that side. A handful of plays like Dylan Moore and Mitch Lewis were fantastic at the start of the year, but are really starting to be quite patchy form-wise. And I think just such a signifying loss for him was against Gold Coast the other day ago. Just a massive one. And uh, we're not competitive, we're not up for it. And uh, yeah, quite simple. I have Hawthorne at 14th. In 13th place, I do have the GWS Giants. 
Again, it's just harsh to really rank some of these teams. I feel like you could possibly put Giants a bit higher because in my eyes, out of many teams around their range, they have extremely high upside at the moment. A new coach of Mark McVeigh last week, his first game, great win against the West Coast Eagles. And their game on Saturday, they really could have won that game against the Lions at the Gabba, at the home deck, and they've only lost one game from like their last 30 over there at the Gabba, the Lions, and they really put it up to them, the Giants. So they do have a lot of that upside, and I think list-wise, we all can agree, they do have a terrific list, but just aren't gelling together, and it could be possibly the reason why they aren't gelling together is because of their staff. Leon Cameron has been at the side for quite a long time now, and it will just give the playing list, I feel, a breath of fresh air under the new coach of Mark McVeigh and James Hurd, etc. But then again, they do have to be 13th because they have not been able to get results in the past month. Again, great win over the Eagles, but you know, quite literally any team can beat the Eagles. Losses to Carlton, Geelong, and as mentioned before, the Lions. So yes, they might be 13th at the moment, but I have every belief that they can really push up my power rankings. They have quite a lot of upside at the moment, the Giants. In 12th position now, and I do have Collingwood. I know this is a very, very harsh one to put them. It's a bit, probably a bit far to low the pies. They had great wins over Fremantle and of course the Blues earlier today. That was such a massive win. But again, those wins, look, they're big, but I think because of last week, because Freo just simply cannot play in the rain, Collingwood played to the conditions and played terrific. And that game today against Carlton, it's just one of those games because of the atmosphere, anything could happen on any given day, any team. And But nevertheless, I'm not writing them off. It was a terrific win. But I still feel that their list, they are predicted to be around a bottom six side. I don't know if they can really show the consistency to push up into the top eight. They have every right to become a finals quality side. But for me, I think there's just a few teams that show a bit more upside and a bit better of a playing list than Collingwood. So I'm just sitting them around 12th at the moment because I think there's a few better performing teams than the Pies. But still, they've had a somewhat decent month. I think before that, they had losses to Richmond and the Bulldogs. And those yeah, just losses were just not good enough. And that's what I mean. I feel like they'll show a bit of inconsistency. And also playing list-wise, they've got some great numbers in there. The Dacos brothers are having a good year. Jack Chris seems to be on track for another BNF award. And also the thing that is hurting them are a few injuries as well. Roughhead retiring their you know, second or very their heart of their back line. Very important key defender. Uh, the number one ruck out, the number one tall forward out, you could say, of Kruger. So I think it could really hurt them in the future. But uh, yeah, still rate them the pies, but I've got them at 12th. In 11th place now, and I do have Port Adelaide. They're really starting to get on a roll for season 2022. They've won the last four out of the last five, and they have been, I guess a few of the wins have been a few soft kills. They did get a win over, well, a fantastic win over St. Kilda, then a really convincing win over the Bulldogs. And I think that's the win that really signifies their season, saying, you know, they're every chance to make the eight, then a soft kill win over North Melbourne. They did fall short to the Geelong Cats, but at the Cattery, it is quite fair enough. It is hard to win over there. And then a pretty ordinary win against Essendon. But I do have them at 11th. I pushed them quite a bit up because they're starting to get a few plays back. They should get Scotty Lysett back soon, I'm pretty sure. They do have Charlie Dixon back in, who is just such a massive asset in that forward line. Fantasia should be back soon. And I think some of their players are starting to play quite well now. Rosie and Butters are a great combination in their midfield. Ollie Wines is starting to pick it up a bit. Boke's been great too. And their forward line, who have been fairly isolated this season, of Finn Layson and also Jordi Artis and Todd Marshall are playing great footy too. So I think Port Adelaide have every chance to make finals footy. They start to really turn it up a bit. They do have hard fixtures coming up though. So I think it's against the Swans, Richmond, Gold Coast and Fremantle over their next four weeks of footy. So I think that's the really big month for Port Adelaide to really show are they capable of making finals because I've got to get results in those games if they want to make the eight. In 10th place now, I have got the Gold Coast Suns. Wowee, what a month of football they have had. The Gold Coast Suns, they have been terrific winning the last three in the last five. That is quite decent and they've just been a very convincing football side, safe to say. Two wins in a row over the Sydney Swans, a great win over the Swans that was and a just compelling win against Fremantle, playing to the conditions, playing tougher. Then a loss to the Bulldogs, but it was quite safe to say that was up for anyone's game, really. A pretty healthy loss in my eyes, and they played great footy over there in Victoria. 
and then a compelling win once again against Hawthorne in pretty tough conditions, let's say. Gold Coast are very well playing up there at the top end and also in Queensland. So they kind of get that edge quite a bit when they do play at home. And as I've said earlier in the season or throughout the season, Metricon Stadium just seems to be a bit of a fortress at the moment for the Suns. Just a hard, hot, humid, buggy conditions for other teams to come over and play. It's quite tough to get a win over there against the Suns at Metricon. Suns have every right to make finals footy in 2022. I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that with their remaining games, they've only got three top eight opponents left in their fixture. So they have a really good opportunity to pick up some results. And just their team in general is really gelling at the moment. Lockie Weller, Will Powell, Charlie Ballard, and Sam Collins has to get more appreciation. They are seriously one of the most underrated key backs or the most underrated key back duo in the competition. Cook Miller, Noah Anderson, Fiorini doing the business. Wits is in career best form. Their forwards too, very effective. Isaac Rankin's finally in some great form. Levi Kasbolt, Mavia Charles having the season of his life. Joel Jeffrey as well bobbing up over these last two weeks. They're just seriously a well-oiled machine at the moment. I've just when watching them play, quite a convincing side, very hard at the footy. And again, it's going to be really exciting to see if they can make finals footy. Just a team that's loved by every fan across Australia, it's safe to say. So it'd be awesome to see if they make finals. So at the moment, they are 10th in my power rankings. In ninth place in my power rankings now, and I do have the Richmond Tigers. They've really started to build onto something in season 2022, I think. A handful of people ripped them off for finals really early on in the season. And then they did win four games in a row. They were soft kill wins, a convincing win over the Eagles, then a nice win over Collingwood, win over the Hawks, and win over the Dons, which are opponents probably around the bottom six, bottom seven, bottom eight at the moment. Uh, and then it was a massive test for them. They really could have beaten Sydney. They really could have bolstered their way up my power rankings and the AFL ladder, but they did fall short and... I think Sydney really deserved to win that game. They got a bit too comfortable with the 30 plus point lead and it was just a massive test between them and the Swans. Both really even teams I feel on the power rankings. And again, they are in the hunt for finals. It'll be interesting to see if the Tigers are able to make finals footy. I did predict them as sixth place in my season predictions at the start of the year. I think they have every right to really reach that target, but they've really got to start beating top eight quality opponents because I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that they've only beaten one or two. Just had a look actually, lads. They've only beaten one top eight side of the Bulldogs. So if they really do want to make finals, they've just got to really put the foot down and start playing quality footy against top eight sides. And to be fair, they really did show that over the Swans. So they do have that somewhat promise. I think their plays are really starting to hit their stride now. Their experience, uh, you know, last year, a lot of their plays, experienced players were out with injury of Dusty Martin, Prestia, they're in... Some, some really good form. I think Liam Baker and Jaden Short are in all Australian form across halfback and drifting into the midfield. Yeah, they're a team not to write off the Tigers, but I think for the, the big test for them is are they able to beat those top eight sides to make the top eight? In eighth spot now, and I do have the Sydney Swans. They've slipped down quite a bit in the power rankings, and it's just been a uh, bit of a question mark this past month for the Sydney Swans. We all know a very classy side. Uh, a good user efficient side but when that's just not on their terms they just seem to struggle a bit seem to panic and I feel like John Longmire is just being out coached a bit in some of his games a good example is the Suns they shut the corridor down exceptionally well forced the Swans to play out wide and they did lose that game but of course the thing with the Swans is they have plenty of upside they have some great talent in their list plenty of great youngsters so I feel with the Swans they're going to be, it's going to be a bit of a scrap for them to make finals, I do believe. Because of their youth, there will be a bit of inconsistency. But if they really do want to make finals, I think a perfect start for them was that win over the Tigers. That's just almost like a season-defining win in my eyes. And they've got some big games coming up. They do have, over the next four weeks, I'm pretty sure, Fremantle, uh, Port Adelaide away, and of course, the Demons next week. So that's going to be a big game, of course. I'm a Swans fan myself, and I'm still very confident that the Sydney Swans will make finals. But um, again, just a bit of a question mark on them. I think they can hit their stride over the latter stages of this season. They do, have, again, have that upside uh, because when they do match the contested possessions, when they match the midfield, they really can play pretty footy. In seventh spot, I do have the Western Bulldogs. The past month, again, they have uh, been similar to Port Adelaide and Richmond, started to get back on track with their season and pick up some important wins. A loss to Port Adelaide away just really made our head scratches thinking, geez, you know, are the Bulldogs going to be sort of inconsistent this year and finish around the table but three solid wins in a row over Collingwood the Suns which was a massive win uh, against the Red Hot Sunside and of course 
as per usual, 100 point win over the Eagles. That's just so casual at the moment, really. But I think power rankings wise, you always got to keep the Bulldogs in the top eight, I feel. Just their upside with the list they have. They were the grand final runners up last year, and they've just got so many quality players in that side. Trelaw and Dunkley, two best mates in life, and gee, are they two peas in the pod, both having excellent seasons. Jack McRae is chipping away, having a somewhat very good season. Probably not all Australian form wise, but he is getting the job done. And Timmy English back in the side, he had a substantial career best game last night against the Eagles. And hey, Norton is still pulling a quite great season up there in the key four position. And with Josh Bruce back, who was substantial last year, they could they could really lift him to pick up even more wins. So I think, uh, yeah, the Bulldogs are still, look, in the hunt for finals. So I wouldn't say they're a lock yet because there's plenty of teams buying for around 7th to 8th. So for me, I do have the Bulldogs in 7th. 6th place now, and I do have St. Kilda. They're sitting 4th in the AFL ladder, which is pretty excellent. They have a very nice percentage on 32 points, which is great to see. But the thing is, though, I kind of want to hold my horses on St. Kilda at the moment. Sure, they have been picking up results. Uh, they had a great win over the Cats. Very solid win over Adelaide, but again... You know, that, that game against Adelaide was pretty ordinary. Adelaide could have really beaten them if they were a bit more accurate. So I think the thing is with St. Kilda is they are a good side. They're a solid side, but I just feel with their playing list, they, they it just disallows them to be a very good side. I said earlier in the start of the season, I just feel with the Saints that they really lack a lot of A-grade talent. But because of this, while they're playing so well, is just a lot of players are punching above that weight. Callum Wilkie, Dougal Howard down back have had great seasons. Jack Sinclair is, of course, in all Australian form. Seb Ross, Brad Crouch have been great in the midfield, stepping up with the injured and quite inconsistent when he wasn't injured. Jack Steele and Ben King, geez the wheeze, has he been on fire down forward. So, and also that, of course, the low key players, Gresham getting stuck in, Jack Higgins on the scoreboard too, memory down forward has been great as well but then again i'm still a little bit unsure on the saints they have bar freer that was a great win but you know that can really happen with any team i just feel that um can they really do it against the top quality sides they got convincingly beat by the demons and their next fixtures is the reason why i have them in six they have the swans and the lions twice they play the bulldogs they play the blues Fremantle, and geelong so those are some very difficult fixtures and i'm just Wanting to put them on hold at the moment, St. Kilda. I don't think they're a lock for finals yet. I want to see, you know, how they do go against them top tier sides. And that could potentially hurt them if they do drop those games. So, so I still think that the Saints are a pretty solid side. But I just feel that um, will they be able to really do it in the second half of the season with their list that um, is a handful of players punching above their weight. And are they able to do it against the top tier sides? In fifth place now, and I do have the Geelong Cats. It just feels this season they've been really quiet achievers. They've shown a little bit of inconsistency with the win-loss, win-loss record. But uh, I just still feel they are an extremely consistent side as they are usually. In, you know, all the time in home and seasons, just massive wins left, right and centre at home uh, against the Port Adelaide Power and also the Adelaide Crows. They just convincingly get it done. It's simple as that. Uh, aging players, of course, but there still are quality players that can really contribute to making, you know, possibly they're still definitely in reach of the top four. They boast a very good percentage of 128.4%. And I think we all know the Cats too. Around this time this season, they really do start to hit their stride of winning consistent games in a row. So look, they could possibly drop a few more games this year because I don't think they are the side that they were last year or the last two years. But for me, they are a lock for finals. And at the moment, I've got them sitting up fifth. In fourth place now, and this is where things do get interesting, I do have Carlton. And before I say how good of a side they have been, let me just say they've only beaten one team in the top eight, and that is the Sydney Swans. So they are a bit cautionary at the moment. People are saying, oh, they're going to be top four. They have every right to make the top four. But again, similar to St. Kilda, are they able to do it against the top tier sides? But nevertheless, Carlton have been excellent this past month. I had them, uh, I think, around eighth in my power rankings from last month, but they've just surged like crazy and picked up massive wins. And they boast seriously such good midfield. They have injuries as well. They have plenty of upside. 
those Carlton plays. A lot of players out like uh, Oscar McDonald, their number one ruck of Pinnanet, their number one key forward of Mackay, Zach Williams across halfback, Ed Kerno, Mitch McGovern, and possibly now Jacob Weedering. So they do have a lot of injuries, but they're still playing terrific footy. Uh, Contested-wise, they're brilliant. Uncontested-wise, they just seem to be so smooth with it. And I think a perfect example of uh, the team that they truly are was against the Sydney Swans the other week ago. Just that second second quarter or first half, I guess you can say, was just brutal. And that is almost a premiership quality looking side. But of course, it isn't all beer and Skittles. You know, it's just not going to be like that. They do struggle to play for four full quarters. So again, a few question marks on the Blues of are they able to be a true top four side? They have a percent of 112 uh, percent, which just is not very good. That's not the percentage you want if you want to make top uh, four footy. But then again, they're still playing fantastic with all those injuries. So credit to them. They've been brilliant this year. And I've got them at fourth in my prayer rankings. In third place now, and I do have the Fremantle Dockers. Past month, there's just been a bit of hiccups. But geez, some of their wins have been signifying defeating North Melbourne by 78 points. But geez, only allowing North Melbourne to kick 24 points was just crazy. And this was at the time of saying... Fremantle will possibly have the best defense in the league and uh, the wet weather footy Unfortunately did hit them. It just I think it's because Perth is just a city that rarely rains They because of this they always just struggle to play a bit in the rain uh, Losses to the Gold Coast Suns and Collingwood by quite convincing margins and they were in the media for quite a bit Long Muir had the perfect press conference of saying to his players to his fans that we had a bit of a reality check We're too ahead of ourselves and how about that with a response, or name a better response, than beating the Melbourne Demons by 38 points. And that second half was an awesome surge. Stephen May went out, and I have to say quickly, that just shows how um, big Stephen May is for the Demons. When he goes out, it just feels like there's just a heart missing, a massive core, massive cog out of that Demons defense. And uh, what a win that was. I think it was Aish. The target on Oliver was brilliant. Frederick kicking goals for fun. Same with Schultz. Again, just Fremantle. Look, the last two weeks were tough. I think it's because of the wet weather, but they're seriously flag mantle, as they do say, is still on, really. And uh, for me, they could possibly possibly be top four lock. I think they will finish in the top four, and they have every right to, of course, bar those two games. If, it, if it's just good weather, if it's not righty, I think, you know, they'll most likely win against any opponent on any given day. In second place now, and it is quite obvious, I do have the Brisbane Lions. Great month of footy they had, of course. Big win over the Eagles over there at the Gabba, and then another convincing win against the Adelaide Crows. They just, just again, they've done it all season, just picking up solid, solid wins. Just their list again, one of the best in the competition. The chemistry is real right now, and this is, you know, a team in their prime at the moment. They have every chance to win the flag, and they do really want to start winning the flag now. But before they come a bit of a, a Geelong Cats, where they've just had so many years in finals, but they just fall short of that flag. So hopefully they don't become a team like that. Um, but I guess you could say last week, their loss against the Hawks, they really could have won that game, but those losses happen. Uh, it's a bit of a, you know, a little bit of a, a healthy loss, a bit of a reality check. It happens for any team in the competition. And then, uh, yeah, a solid win over the Giants. But I think the thing is with the Lions is their last two weeks, um, you can't write it off. You just have to look at it and say, a little, you've got to have a little bit of caution on the lines, maybe they're getting a bit too comfortable at the moment. So I think the next month is big from just want to see if they can still convincingly get results because Giants have Giants had every right. Giants had every right to win that game the other day ago. But again, they're still classy side of the lines. They still convincingly get games done. And uh, for sure, they'll probably be a second place lock for the rest of the season. And in first place, of course, I do have the Melbourne Demons or should I say Nam, as they have been known for the past two weeks. Um, they're pretty much just going to be staying first for the whole season. And um, they have gotten a bit of a reality check uh, with a few injuries now. They uh, picked up a massive injury. Well, not massive, but um, a massive out of Stephen May with concussion. And as said before, Stephen May's just the heart of that team. Such an important player. He's miles ahead, miles ahead of the best key back this year. And when he goes out, look at that. Their defense kind of falls apart and Frio uh, just bolster them, just smash them, and they pick up the win. But uh, about Melbourne, the Demons anyway, it's quite obvious they've been a, a star side. And look, they um, haven't really played many top four quality opponents. I think a lot of people were saying this, you know, they they picked up pretty soft kill wins. Their win over St. Kilda was very convincing, so they still can beat those those top eight sides. Uh, win over the Eagles and then North Melbourne, and then before that, uh, Hawthorne. They got really challenged by the Hawks, so that's a the thing. They've played a lot of bottom 10, bottom eight sides, so... 
I still think they will finish first on the ladder, but I think it's still going to be an interesting next month for them. They've got the Swans next week, so I think will will they bounce back? Will they show you know the team that have been this whole season? But in my eyes, they should be perfectly fine. They're still clearly the best side in the competition, and for me, that should be pretty comfortable of making the grand final in my eyes. So everybody, there were my power rankings for the month of May of the 2022 AFL season. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you did go on to enjoy today's video. And also feel free to comment down below and let me know what you think of my power rankings and feel free to comment down yours below too. So anyways, fellas, that's the end of today's video. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'll talk to you later. See you later, guys.